It's Halloween time, and that means it's time to celebrate death. I'm Angeline Duran, and I'm going to do a series of short videos about the topic of death in the ancient Southwest. The Southwesterners are known for Dia de los Muertos, and it's a time to celebrate the dead and remember our ancestors. I'm also taking this opportunity to shamelessly promote my handmade bead art. If you love these videos, or if you get something out of it, or you enjoy it, a really nice way for you to give back might be to purchase a gift for somebody else or for yourself. Thank you for that, and now, on with the show! This is a little shorty video about the topic of kill holes in pottery. Now I'm going to hold the camera to encourage myself to keep it short. In the video called Death Party Time, we talked about burial customs of the ancient Southwesterners and why they actually bury people with grave goods. That's because of a belief in the afterlife and that people will need to have the items they used in life in the afterlife. That makes sense. If you believe in an afterlife, you believe in the person needing items. But why would you put a kill hole? A kill hole is when you punch a hole right in through the middle of the bottom of a bowl or of a pot to kill the pot. Why do you need to kill a pot? Well, the simplistic answer that's always given is something like, is to release the spirit of the deceased so that the spirit of the pot and the spirit of the deceased does not get trapped in the pot it it releases the life essence of both the pot and the person i understand that but it still makes me ask but why what is it about the pot why did why is the person's spirit even in the pot to start with an author named Anna Stralia, in a book she wrote called Flexible Stones, talks about this topic and I think she completely nails the emotional and philosophical reason behind thinking that a pottery good, or even a stone metate, something that a person would use in life to grind the food, might become imbued with the person's essence. Listen to this. In prehistoric societies, objects were not as distinct from people as they appear to be in the Western industrialized world. In the prehistoric universe, people were constructed through the objects they made, used, or owned, as much as objects were constructed through their producers, users, and owners. There's sort of a topic that's similar to this in the same vein regarding pottery, and that's a, something called a spirit break. And a spirit break is when a piece of pottery is made but there's an imperfection around the top. There's a painted rim around the top of the pot, but the rim, the, the circle is not complete. There's a break, or maybe there's a design, but there's a break in the design. Maybe it looks like a spiral, but there's a, a piece missing. And this is called a spirit break. It's not particularly related to death, but it is sort of in the same vein of releasing the spirit from the pottery. And this is explained as it being a way for the artisan to actually um, step away from this item that they put so much of their soul into and release their own spirit so it can continue to create. An author named Sarah Lewis in a book called The Rise had this to say on the topic. We thrive in part when we have purpose, when we still have more to do. The deliberate incomplete has long been a central part of creation myths themselves. In Navajo culture, some craftsmen and women sought imperfection, giving their textiles and ceramics an intended flaw called a spirit line, so that there is a forward thrust, a reason to continue making work. Nearly a quarter of 12th century Navajo rugs have these contrasting color threads that run out from the inner pattern to just beyond the border that contains it. Navajo baskets and often pottery have an equivalent line called a heart line or a spirit break. The undone pattern is meant to give the weaver's spirit a way out to prevent it from getting trapped and reaching what we sense is an unnatural end. So basically the mere act of either making or interacting with an object over a long period of time to basically facilitate your actual life you, you, some of your essence goes into this object. They, they didn't have disposable things in the olden days. You know, they weren't buying new Tupperware all the time or a new pot to cook in every time one got like the Teflon wore off. They recycled, they used something to the very bitter end and then they took what was left of it and repurposed it for something else. So it became, that, that item became a part of your life. It became something that enabled your life. It became like a family member. And, and so much of your love and effort was put into the use of shaping how that item eventually came to 
be how it was used and well worn. And so your spirit became part of that object. Likewise, your spirit needed to be released from that object and it needed to go with you into the afterlife and not stay buried in the earth with a piece of you attached to it. I think the word kill hole is a little bit of an ungenerous way to call what that is when you're releasing your spirit from the bottom of a, of a pot or of a bowl, but that's what it's called. That's typically what it's called. I like the idea of the spirit break. I think it expresses something of the same idea, but it has a gentler and actually I think a little bit more accurate sound to it. Okay, so I can't let you go without telling you about one more thing because this was really, really cool and it's something I liked and I want to share it with you. It's on the topic of pottery and burial customs. So when I was out in Arizona at the Clear Creek Ruins, I'll put a link to my article about that from my blog in the um, description section of this video on YouTube. And also, if you're reading my blog, I'll put a link to it in this post. So. Um, what we noticed when looking at the Clear Creek ruins was that, first of all, it was exactly like Tuzigut. So if you go to a website that talks about Tuzigut, you can look at that and understand what the Clear Creek ruins would have been in their uh, good times. But what we saw was that the ground was positively littered like gravel with pottery shards. and. I couldn't believe it. I've never seen so much pottery in all of my days. Like it was washing down the, the washes. It was just all over the ground. And I couldn't like make any sense of why would there be so much pottery everywhere. And I, the best I could come up with at the time was that they were using this for some kind of gravel. Okay, so I just read something about this and it has to do with burial customs. I think maybe this is the answer. People, were buried under their homes. We know this. People were buried under their homes with their earthly possessions and then the, the house was burned and new houses were built on top of this. This was certainly a Maya Mayan custom, but it appears to have also been a custom in the North American Southwest. So what the Mayans would do is they would complete this ritual and then they would use the broken pieces of pottery from the household and the broken pieces of other things from the household and use that as fill to fill in that layer over the grave and lay the foundation for the new house. I think that's what was happening at Clear Creek and probably everywhere else, probably at Tuzigut and every place else where you had this style of Pueblo village and their burial customs. It's a little mystery that's been living in my brain for the last couple of years, and I wonder if maybe now it's solved. Food for thought? Look into it. Let me know.